You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Let's get real with your host and certified practitioner, Laura Knopp. Laura is here to help you use your inner spiritual GPS and find the tools to help you get through the rigors of daily life. Through meditation, numerology, and crystals, as well as your higher power, Laura can help you create solutions for effective life changes. So now, please welcome the host of Let's Get Real, Laura Knopp. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to Let's Get Real. I'm your host, Laura Knopp, and we're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So for today's show, I'm going to talk about the different years in your life from a numerology perspective and how they have a different vibration and and what that means and why sometimes... You know, you'll have an inkling in a specific year to do something and how that resonates with the year you're in. So just to back it up and explain a little bit, you know, we've talked about numerology in the past and the foundation of it is Pythagoras, mystic, mathematician, 580 BC, right? So he intuited that the day we're born has vibrational qualities to it that lock in, you know, that are um, all include our challenges, what we came here to learn, what we came here to manifest. And so as we look at that, the numbers one through nine are uh, generally what the birth path numbers are, except, you know, if you're 11, 22, 33, 44, um, those are also numbers. So how do you get what your birth path number is, you take the day you're born, the month you're born, and then and add those two together. So let's say it's 2 and 25, so you get 27. And let's say you're born in 1964. 1 plus 9 plus 6 plus 4 is 20. So 27 and 20 is 47. And then you're going to reduce it down to a single digit. So 4 plus 7 is 11. Okay, so you got 11 there. So um, then you would not reduce it down to a single digit. You'd express it as an 11 slash 2. Uh, it's a master path number all about creating connection and in the world and using your intuitive cap- capabilities to help uh, heal people and Uh, be the connector in the world. So so let's say now as you take that into, all right, I've added up the day I'm born, the month I'm born, and then individually the number, the digits of the year I'm born. And then you want to know, well, what the heck year am I in? How do I do that? So how you do it is you take the day you're born and the month you're born, so we'll stick with that same example of 2 plus 25 is 27, if you're born on February the 25th, and then you take the specific year that you're in. So this year's 2018, so 2 plus 0 plus 1 plus 8 is 11, so 27 plus 11 is 38. So, of course, I've randomly picked an example here. Uh, uh, So it's an 11 year. Um, Your life goes in nine year cycles, but sometimes your two year is an 11 year. 
So if you were, if your birth path is an 11 and you're in an 11 year, um, that's like, uh, taking everything up to the, uh, the next level. It's like 11 prime. Right. Um, and so we're going to, um, go through the different, uh, years of, of your life in terms of, we'll start with one and, um, move up through there. And, you know, you may be thinking, well, why is it important to know what year I'm in and what does it really matter? I do what I want to do or whatever. Um, a lot of it is about just being awake and understanding when you're presented with something that maybe there's a reason for it and how can you pay attention to that and help it and, you know, have it help inform you and help you move through something. So as we think about our lives going in nine year cycles and that 11 would replace the two, uh, that I just um, computed. So if you find yourself in a one year, actually, you know, I'm going to back up. So when you first compute your birth path, so the number that I came up with was the 11, the 11, two. So the year you're born, you would write next to that year, 11, two. Then the next year, so let's say you were born in 1964, you'd write 11, two. And then the next year is 1965. So then you'd go right to three. So you don't start at one, you start at whatever your birth path is. Just to clarify that, because it can be confusing. And I have found, and the things that I have learned and read and experienced is that your the year that you are in starts on your birthday it doesn't start on january 1st of 2018 it starts on for instance february 25th of 2018 uh, would have started if that was your birthday your 11 year or your 11 two year so from that as you figure out okay here's my birth path um then you start from there and see what year you're in. Why is it important to understand what year you're in? It's sometimes it's, it's not so important to understand exactly what the year is that you were in as much as it is to understand the pattern. And I'll explain that as we move through the years one through nine, and then we'll add those master path uh, you know, double digit years in there that replace some of the single digit ones sometimes. Because as you see that pattern, what you might understand is that, um, you know, if you are a person that in your nine year has a lot of drama or a lot of change or whatever, nine years from there, you're probably going to be experiencing something similar, some similar type of vibration. You know, it may not be the exact same scenario, but something similar. So then you understand, wow, I'm a person who needs big change every nine years. And uh, if I'm not open to it or I'm not the one leaning into the change, I will be woken up in some way, shape or form to uh, have me help me facilitate that change. So it's nice to understand where, you know, how you move through your cycles so that you can do it in a more fluid, uh, awake manner, you know, which is the key here. You know, it's not about fear. Or, oh God, I'm going to go into a nine year or, you know, my four years going to be a disaster or whatever. It's about, you know, how do I notice the patterns in my life and what are those lessons that repeatedly come up so that I can, use that to evolve and move through it. So we're going to come to a break here. And when we come back, we're going to start with the number one and talk about uh, that year and what, what it feels like. You've been listening to Let's Get Real. I'm your host, Laura Knopp, and we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back from the break. This is Laura Knopp, live on the VBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you're listening to Let's Get Real. So we're talking today about your life in the cycles that it goes in, uh, the nine-year cycles it goes into that uh, relate to numerology, and you know how we can use that as an effective tool to move through a year and understand, you know, what you're being presented with and how, and you know what that lesson is. So we're going to start with the number, you know, the first year, the one year. And as I explained previously, you might not have started your life in a one year unless you're a one. You start with whatever number that you are. But from there, you can always figure out what year am I in by adding the day of your birth, the month of your birth, and the current year. So... As you think about being in a one year, the one year is all about new beginnings, right? It's a, it's a year where you need to conquer any self-doubt, be creative uh, with how you move forward with something new. And a lot of people in a one year will get the urge to, you know, they'll start uh, a new job, they'll start a new company, they'll want to uh, learn something new, new education. Uh, And so you're going to have this energy to help you change directions if you need to, uh, to do things. And it can be kind of a lonely year because you need to have a lot of self-directed movement. So it's kind of a year where you want to avoid, uh, you know, trivial relationships um, and, you know, and commitments and things that don't really move you forward, right? It's not a year where you say yes to everyone about the things that they want you to help them do because you really need to have some focus in terms of how do you move yourself ahead? What are those dreams you have? What are those things that you want to do? And it will, you know, you have that energy to do it. So again, as I said, it, you know, it can be kind of lonely, because you have to really focus on doing a lot of things yourself and moving forward with things that uh, you're confident about and, you know, trust that inner voice of your own innovation and what it is you want to do. So with that, you know, the one year can be this really exciting time and from a, you know, I, I kind of was uh, thinking about it here as I was preparing for the show. And it's interesting, you know, with, um, you know, crystals, I love rocks, crystals of all kinds. 
And so if you're feeling, if you've computed and you're like, I'm in a one year and I just don't know how to move forward. And I'm, you know, it makes me nervous and scared or whatever. And, you know, it it needs to be this year of conquering your fear and being confident. I like red Jasper and uh, also pyrite, both great grounding stones, but also ones that give you that strength and um, movement forward and, and self-confidence. So, you know, if you're like, wow, I'm in a one year and I really want to move forward with something or I need some more fortitude, you know, put a red Jasper on your, on your desk or by your bed or some pyrite or put it in your pocket. Um, and those can be, you know, that's like a way where it helps vibrate with that idea of groundedness and moving forward and confidence. So as you spend a a year of moving forward and doing things in a direction that requires some independence, then you move into your two year and your two year is all about finding your people, finding your support staff, creating connections So with that, it's about how do I conquer my fear, right? So I want to be confident in my one year, come up with my idea. And then in my two year, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm going to find people who kind of vibrate the same way I do with these things, resonate with my ideas, can help support me so I don't feel so alone and I can help connect and create, you know, and get my tasks done. It helps you with, you know, forming your team, organizing details. And it's also uh, the two year is this year about, you know, creating those friendships. It's not just about creating relationships with what can people do for me, but a mutually beneficial connection, friendship, love connection. So then you take that two year and you say, all right, sometimes when I'm in my two year, I'm actually in an 11 year, which was my example earlier. And then that just kind of takes that two up a notch. So the 11 says, wow, I'm really going to be intuitive and I'm really going to create connections and I'm going to feel extra sensitive. So if you're in 11 year and you feel like, you know, somebody looks at you wrong and it hurts your feelings or you feel like, oh, you want to hide under a rock, understanding that that heightened sensitivity is going to bring you more information about how do you connect more deeply with people? How do you heal relationships? It's a big energy of healing relationships and, you know, forming bonds that will help bring you forward with whatever it is you're doing in that nine year cycle. And so also things to note is that, if you computed your birth path and it added up to one after you reduced it to a single digit and then you're in a one year, you can feel extra one like, okay. And if you added it up and you're a two or an 11 and you're in a two or an 11 year, you will feel extra like that. Like it just enhances what your birth path vibration is. And conversely, if you're not a one, but you're in a one year, you kind of get that feeling of this is what a one feels like you know they're always conquering their self-doubt and trying to be innovative and be an inventor and a leader and you know that vibration that's what that feels like so in a two-year when you're trying to cooperate Um, conquer fear and you want more cooperation and, you know, finding your people, whether it's support people for your idea at work or friends to support you emotionally or a love interest. um, The crystal that I like there is a citrine. Uh, It's a lot about personal power and uh, not so much ego as it is your, how you feel about yourself and and being comfortable in your own skin. And in in the citrine really activates the first three chakras. So it's all about being in the world and creating something in this world. So, you know, 
bring a citrine along with you, put it in your pocket. So we're going to take another break and we'll come back with a three year. You've been listening to Let's Get Real live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Laura Knopp. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Let's Get Real. I'm your host, Laura Knopp, and we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, talking about numerology today and the different years of your life and how they what they vibrate with what they resonate with how they you know what kind of inclinations they give you and teach you if you have any specific questions on it you want to call me the number here is 866-451-1451 so we talked about the ones the twos sometimes the 11 year when that two uh, is an 11 and then as we move on to the three year so you've started something new in your one year you found your people in your two year in your three year you're going to really network and find a bigger support group and enjoy what you started in your one year and be social and really communicate your heartfelt wisdom that three energy is a lot about communication so you know, operating out of the heart instead of the head is a, is always the goal. And if you feel like you are not tapping into your creativity, what you want to do, what you want to communicate, and it feels like you're a little bit stagnant in a three year movement is very important, right? Physical movement, creativity. So I, and separate from maybe what it is you're specifically focused on. So let's say you're in the ad business or whatever, which would be a natural thing for a a three path to do. But let's say you're in the ad business and you're like, Oh, I'm having a tough time, you know, creating my idea boards for some commercial or something. So find something else creative to do that. It's that it's is its own end whether it's, you know, making a pot holder or painting a stone or something just to help you shift out of the head and into the heart and get into that creative zone, you know, some body movement. And that will help you in that three year to feel more energized, to get out there with your ideas, communicate them, have fun, socialize, you know, build a network, bring your wisdom to it. So for this year, the stone I like is uh, Chrysocolla. 
and uh, it's this blue stone. It kind of looks like, you know, in a ball, it kind of looks like the globe or something. You know, it's got like gray and whites in it and maybe a few different colors. But it's a nice stone for speaking from the heart, for communicating authentically and, you know, getting in touch with that. So great stone for you if you're like, well, I hate parties. I don't want to network and I've got to go to this thing or I just can't stand talking to people. Whatever it is where you're like, well, you know, why is my three year forcing me always to go to trade shows or, um, you know, things at school for my kids or whatever it is. Right. You know, just take that, take a piece of chrysocolla, put it around your neck, put it in your pocket, whatever. And understand, wow, how can I move through this year communicating more and networking more and being comfortable with it as you just, you know, come back to the heart space with it as opposed to just operating out of the head, which automatically and a lot of times with the left brain brings you into fear. So as you move on to the four year, the four year is a lot about firming up your foundation. So you've come up with an idea in your one year, you found your support people in your two year, in your three year, you've communicated your idea, you've got a network. In your four year, you're like, all right, how do I create a firm foundation for whatever it is that I'm establishing here in this cycle? whether it's building something specific uh, and concrete in the material world or building a system. It's a lot about being practical, but also patient, right? Because you, you know, you want to get it done and you're going to have all this energy. The four year gives you a lot of energy to do things similar to the one year, but like you're going to want to work and work and work and work. Be careful with that because you can go overboard with it too. And you can be working on a lot of things and a lot of details that maybe are not essential or you can get lost in the detail. So you got to, you know, pick your head up and really kind of see the 10,000 foot view of what you're doing, right? So keeping that 10,000 foot view in mind as you're working on your day-to-day tasks. But it's a year where you may have the energy to be like, oh my God, I am going to clean out the garage or I'm going to move or always wanted to build that screened in porch or, uh, at work, I am going to change all the desks around and change the way the office looks or, you know, things like that. So it's really kind of a year to swab the decks, get yourself organized, get rid of the crap you don't need and find that practical focus but also, you know, keeping your eye on the on the prize, on the big view, and being patient and letting it unfold, trusting that the work that you're doing, the foundation you're building, is going to help you launch that. So what do I like for the four-year from a, from a crystal perspective, if you're in a four-year? I like fancy jasper. Uh so I always call it the get her done stone. Uh, it's like, uh, it's got a t- ton of different colors in it. It's not like this sparkly stone. It's got greens and reds and clear and browns and, you know, and each stone may be a different color even, but it's a lot about getting down to business, getting your tasks done, having the energy to do that, the strength to do that. So if you, you know, have some big task ahead of you, you know, put on a bracelet, a fancy Jasper, or put a rock of it by your workspace. And just, you know, that I, that reminder of, you know, I need to get this done and that, you know, all things right have a vibrational quality to it. And that's the vibrational quality of fancy Jasper. And just as a side note with that too, is, um, uh, you know, acupuncture, the gallbladder meridian is, also what I call the, you know, something that's a get or done meridian, right? Um, it's about completing your tasks. So if you feel like, gosh, I'm, I figured it out and I'm in a four year and why the heck can I get anything done? And I'm not being practical and I can't see the forest for the trees. 
go get some acupuncture and clear out those meridians and clear out that gallbladder meridian, which may be stuck to help you with your tasks. So we're going to come back from this break and move on to the number five. You've been listening to Let's Get Real live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Laura Knopp. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve this stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress, plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Let's Get Real. I'm your host, Laura Knopp, and we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We've been talking about uh, the years of your life um, the, and how it, your life goes in nine-year cycles and what each of those years feels like. So I just was uh, talk, I was just talking about the year, the four-year, and actually before we go on to five, we need to talk about the twenty-two-year. So sometimes your four-year is a 22-year. How do you know? You've added up the day you're born with the month you're born in, and then you've added the individual digits of the year that you're currently in, not the year you're born. And that will determine um, you know, what year you're in. And sometimes you're not in a four-year. You're in a higher vibrating year of a 22-year. So if the four years about, you know, creating a foundation, cleaning house, structure, being patient, working hard, then the 22 year brings that up another notch. And it's like a a year to really get something done. So it's like, oh, I've always wanted to write a book or produce a movie or, um, you know, build a humongous bridge or whatever it is. Uh, write up a computer program. The 22 years, that extra heightened inspiration of getting something done that really brings what you have to offer out into the world. So you'll probably attract maybe a lot of criticism with it, uh, but you have to have that single minded focus of getting things done. The only caveat with that I would say is that the 22 energy can really kind of be a little bit of a bulldozer energy where you're like, okay, I need to, I see what needs to be done here and I'm going to move forward with it. So, you know, don't roll anybody over in your path as you do it. So with the, uh, we'll move on to the five year. So with the five year, Now that you've created an idea, found your friends, gotten a network, communicated what it is you're offering, built a platform, a structure for it, 
now in your five year, you're like, how do I expand this beyond the conventional? How do I create more freedom? Take that idea to the next level that will really impact more people's lives on a needed change, unique type of bent. So this is what the five years all about. And, and the five year has that natural vibration of, um, sales and marketing and expansion and freedom. And, you know, it's the year that you're like, okay, I want to travel to some place I'd never been because I want to go there. I need to get out. I need to move because it just, you know, I'm feeling constricted where I am. I don't want to work in an office. It's too, too limiting or, or, you know, on a personal level, it can be about, wow, those people bore me. I have nothing in common with them and I'm done with them. You know, you can, you know, it's a year to like kind of cut ties with, with, people that don't serve you in your life or serve what it is you're interested in or bring you down. Important part about a five year, because it can be really super expansive and lots of opportunity and fun, fun, fun and movement is you do need to stay grounded a bit because otherwise you can kind of spiral out of control with self-indulgence or really just be whipping in the wind you know, so with that freedom comes some need to do it from a space where you're have some sort of anchor or home base. So I like the carnelian as the crystal for the five year, because not only is it really about continuing to incorporate your first, second, and third chakra and, and into what it is you're doing and vibrate with those to help activate them. But it's like this stone of, you know, creativity that helps you to not get so much into the negative end of things, right? It helps to, it's like a self-cleaning stone, helps you to, you know, get rid of negativity. And it's also kind of like a protective stone for you in that same way, right? It's one of those things, if you travel a lot, you know, put a carnelian in your, in your suitcase or, you know, put one in the glove box of your car. It's kind of like this protective thing. They're orange, but they can, you know, they can have flecks of white in them. So some of them can be very clear, you know, a bright orange, or they can be, um, you know, more of a natural stone. But, uh, I like the carnelian with that, you know, helps you break out of convention, but keep yourself, uh, in your body and not be, to, you know, to the four corners of the earth, whipping in the wind so that it can be, you know, this inspirational year to really think outside the box. So then you move into your six year and your six year, you know, really changes the tone, right? You've been in this five year, it's like party, party, fun, movement, expansion, and you get into your six year and then it becomes about the collective, how do I create more balance in my life? How do I uh, think about more than just me? It's about my family, my group, my workplace, my community, the world, right, on some level there. And so it'll be a year of how do I find balance in my life? How do I give from a full place and think about other people? And it's a really like this domestic vibration year of a lot of times babies are born in a six year, you know, to, you know, you'll have a baby born in your six years, part of a change in your domestic vibration. Uh, you get married, you get divorced, someone dies, you, you get, you know, there's a sickness in your family or in your own life that brings you back to what's truly important. How do I reset the button if I've really gone far afield in my five year and I want to come back to the basics of compassion and giving and balance and, you know, showing the world the beauty and creativity that I have. So we're going to come back after the break from talking about the six and go into the 33 
You've been listening to Let's Get Real live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Laura Knopp. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank- Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back. I'm Laura Knopp, host of Let's Get Real. And we are live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio talking about your life and its nine year cycles. So we're just, we were wrapping up the six, which is this empathic year of domestic vibration. How do you help your community, your family? How do you welcome a change to it, whether it's uh, an addition or a subtraction, deal with health issues, and bring balance into your life? So, as we move from you know the the six year to the thirty three year, which is sometimes what the six year may be, if you added up the individual digits of your birthday, month, and the current year, sometimes it can be a thirty three year. It doesn't happen a whole lot, and maybe for some people more than others. As you look at that, you'll have a thirty three year in a nine year cycle instead of a six year, and that thirty three year is really this heightened, intuitive, spiritual year. So it really brings the empathic uh, help, the community, the family, that compassionate vibe of the six, and brings it really more onto um, a higher intuitive world stage view, right? That higher intensity. That's what all of those, all of the master path, the 11, the 22, the 33, those numbers just take things up to the next level. So the 33 year can be very in, um, informative in terms of you may really feel like uh, you want to save the world or you can really get yourself into some martyr situations where you're really sacrificing for other people. You know, and, and again, balance still Um, applies here how do you give from a full space but it may be a year where you're like you know you can feel a lot of things that maybe sometimes you don't feel in general or you feel a little bit but you'll be more intense with them in terms of maybe having more vivid dreams of loved ones that have passed or getting more signs from them or feeling them more so really a lot about that 33 vibration. So don't get wigged out by it. Um, be more attentive to it. What is it saying to you? What what What's the message here? And how can you be balanced with not just going off into um, 
more of a head or out of your body experience, but experience it all the way in your body and using the messages that you get. And, you know, that can, it can be a very healing thing for yourself or for other people in your, in your life. So what stone do I like for this year? I like the, I like the green jade. And jade is this heart stone that's really, you know, it's green, obviously, as I said, um, you know, and there are different qualities of it. And that doesn't really, you know, it doesn't come into play where you're like, oh, I've got to go get jade from the fanciest place on the planet or it's got to be the most expensive one. It's just, you know, what feels good to you. You know, go to a rock shop, you start feeling around at different pieces of stones and, you know, um, jade may not even talk to you at all. You know, you may be like, eh, I don't like that or whatever, but. For me, I like Jade for that heart healing capability, which is a lot about what the empath feels in the six or 33 year is that, you know, compassion, love, creativity there. So it's a very calming stone. It's a healing stone. And, you know, so you may feel compelled to get some Jade, wear it when you're in your sixth year or in, you know, specific times where you feel like you'd like to be a little bit more heartfelt or you'd like to be a little calmer. You need some healing. Okay, so we're going to move on to the seven year. So the seven year is this introspective spiritual year about seeking more knowledge, learning more about yourself. You may have that urge to, you know, go to an ashram or go hide in the woods or, you know, just be by being by yourself. And you have you it's not that you don't like your friends or you don't want to be with other people, but it's really a year where you feel like I want to be more self examining and I want to I'm really interested in how do I feel and I'm going to read more spiritual books and I'm going to maybe pray more or meditate more and you know just really seek that connection and that higher knowledge and create something that is healing for other people that you can teach them something that you know you have discovered during this year of introspection so, you know, if you're like, wow, I, how have I turned into a totally antisocial person? And you find, oh, I'm in a seven year. Oh, that's what it is. It's not because I'm, you know, a negative person. It's because I just need some time to really examine myself. So take that time and use it. Use that, you know, that urge to seek something deeper within yourself and to be more alone to enhance those, your higher knowledge, enhance your, what your understanding of yourself is. And, you know, especially as we're coming towards the end of a nine year cycle, you're like, okay, I have, you know, started something in my one year that I've created a bond with other people in my two year. I've networked and communicated it in my three year. I've built a solid base and cleaned house and worked hard on it on my, in my four year. I've had fun with it and expanded on it in my five year. I've brought it as a help to my community and the bigger picture in my six year and then in my seven year, I'm taking that knowledge up one level of how can it help create more healing? How can I teach more people about it? So that seven year, you know, you're gathering the information. So it's like the year to write your book or, you know, create a meditation series, do all that stuff. And then you bring it into the next year to bring it to the to the world in your eight year. So we're not going to have time to go through all of them this uh, this week. So I'm going to end with the seven year, and then we're going to go into the meditation in our next segment. But the seven year, what stone I like for the seven year is angelite. Uh, it's this light blue pretty stone, and it's a lot about 
how do you access higher knowledge? How do you access more of your spiritual connection? So grab a piece of angelite if you're in a seven year and you feel like you're disconnected from your higher self. So we're going to come back from the break and do a meditation. You've been listening to Let's Get Real live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I'm your host, Laura Knopp. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. You're listening to Let's Get Real live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Laura Knopp, and it's time for our meditation moment. So as we've talked about the energy and vibrational qualities of the year you're in, and we've talked in previous uh, episodes about your birth path and what did you come here to do and accomplish and manifest... I want to do a meditation just to kind of explore that a little bit more. So as you get comfortable, close your eyes if that's safe. You're not driving something. I just want you to get into a comfortable space. Just starting to tune into your breath. So the breath in feeling the expansion through the chest up to the collarbones, the breath out, emptying out any tension, anxiety, letting that breath go all the way out, finding the next breath in, maybe a little deeper, maybe a little slower, Allowing yourself that pause before the emptying out. So just continuing to slowly let the breath move in a little more slowly, a little more deeply. Let the breath out. Exhale for an extended period. Just finding a rhythm with the breath in and the breath out. And then as you bring your awareness to your heart center, start to focus on the breath in to the heart and out of the heart. Just continuing the breath into the heart and out of the heart, so expanding through the heart space and softening through the heart space. And as you do that, I'd like you to imagine that all the responsibility that you have in the world whether it's to other people, to bills, to your health. All of those things are neutral. And you have enough money to do whatever you wanted to do. As you start to get into that neutral space where your obligations aren't pulling you 
and you have financial freedom to do what you want to do. Breathing in and out of the heart space. What is, what comes up for you? And maybe, you know, it harkens back to childhood, something you always dreamed about doing. What did you always want to do? But maybe you talked yourself out of it. Someone else talked yourself out of it. Life got in the way. What have you always wanted to do? As you notice what comes up, ask yourself, where in my life can I incorporate that part of it, that dream? How can I adapt my life to help fulfill that dream? As you continue to breathe into the heart and out of the heart. What are those baby steps you can take to capture some or all of that dream? And just continuing to breathe in and out of the heart space. Just acknowledging what your heartfelt desires are, what your dreams are, and how you can move in that little direction of that dream, lean into it. So we're going to wrap up today. You've been listening to Let's Get Real live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Laura Knopp, and listen to us next week as we continue with the numbers. This has been Let's Get Real with your host, Laura Knopp. Listen each week as Laura assists you with your spiritual connection to your own divinity through her various healing modalities to create a better you. Here on Let's Get Real with Laura Knopp. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.